How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Obviously a very tough series for the Yankees against the Mets. Tough homestand in general. You lost four out of six. You did get two games from the Rays, but the Yankees are off to a tough start in the second half after finishing the first half in an even tougher way. I don't think it's out of line if you're a Yankees fan to be kind of ticked off, to be kind of feeling deja vu, deja vu from the last few years where this team has started off very strong and then gone right in the toilet. Uh, we got a number of voicemails this morning that I want to get to, so I will get to those. But just know that I'm here with you. Misery loves company. I'll be here with you after every single game. So go ahead and subscribe. But let's get to your voicemails real quick and see how you guys are feeling this morning. I live in New York City. I cannot believe you had the balls to do it. Yo, Derek, it looks like uh, Aaron Boone uh, is not happy in the press conference again. Um, now, he didn't go as far as like slam the table this time, but last time he did that, the Yankees um, went like 5-0 and or something like that. But I don't know if this hopefully sparks another movement again. Nothing I can say matters. we got to do it. I'm confident we will. I know we will pull out of this, but that's all it is right now is me saying it to you. For as bad as it's been, we're also in a great position. And we got to go play. We got to go play the baseball the way we're capable of playing. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We got to go play the baseball. We've got to play better. Yada yada yada. It would be helpful if we would have better players. That might help us play better. Sorry, guys. My mood for the last month or so has been miserable because, like a lot of you, my daily mood depends on how the Yankees are playing, and they've just been flat out stinking up the joint. For over a month now, only the White Sox have been worse, and barely. And the White Sox are trading everybody at the deadline. I've seen a few more people say this morning that the Yankees should sell. That will not happen. They need about six guys at the deadline, though. There's this scene in Ocean's Eleven where Brad Pitt's character is teaching movie stars how to play cards, and they're playing five-card draw. And in five-card draw... When you have an ace, you're allowed to swap out four other cards from the deck. And so this guy does that. He he gets his, you know, hand and he says, All right, I want it, I want four new cards. And Brad Pitt says, You don't want four new cards, you want to fold. And I don't blame those of you who want to fold right now. A lot of us have a lot of time invested in this, and we want to see the Yankees go as far as they can. But if there's another collapse this season, heads have got to roll. Many heads. Cashman, Boone, all them guys. The message I would like to play is uh, Boone keeps saying, we got to play better. We got to play better. What is he doing as a manager to make that happen? Nothing as far as I can see. Have a good show. Have a good day. I mean, other than tinkering with the lineup, I'm not sure there's much else he can do right now. He can try and fire up his guys, but... This might not be a group that's capable of being fired up. They might not have that kind of personality. I mean, you look at all these other teams. You look at the Mets, they're having so much fun. You look at other teams, they get up to play the Yankees, and the Yankees just seem like they're going about their business. If you win, you win. If you lose, you lose. But they don't have that quote-unquote dog in them that they had earlier this year. Maybe that's because their energy is down because some guys have struggled. But you're right. It's up to Aaron Boone to get that energy going in the right direction or – on Brian Cashman to inject some new life into this team, maybe release some guys, maybe motivate some guys. But the leadership, the front office, the management, the coaching staff, not getting it done. Obviously, the players are not getting it done, but I'm not entirely convinced that we have the players that can get it done. Bob, uh, great show. Frustrating night. Yeah, I think everybody's to blame a little bit. Mostly Cashman, like you said, he's constructed in just an awful team with no depth. But uh, we got to start winning uh, some close games, not referring to last night. But if we can start winning some close games, uh, we can still hang in there. Uh, got to get a new closer and uh, a couple of bats. Um, what do you think? Closer is a given. We've been saying that all year. Clay Holmes not the man for that job. Needs some swing and miss. But the way I view the lineup, you need at least three bats. But I do think that the Yankees can get two of those bats internally. I think Jason Dominguez comes back and he plays left field. Verdugo hits the bench. 
Grisham hits the road. You got Stanton coming back as your DH. I don't know if they're going to make a change at second base. You know, Glaber Torres has hit a couple of home runs this week. They might think he's getting hot at just the right time. But maybe he's getting hot because he knows he might get traded and it's kind of taking some of the pressure off. So I, I definitely think they need at least three bats. Uh, third base, you know, I talked a little bit about Ryan McMahon last night. A few of you have pointed out that he has said that he doesn't want to be traded. The Rockies have said they're not going to trade him. But we've seen that before. Guys over the years saying, well, I don't want to be traded. But then at the last second, they agree to it because they got a chance to go to a winner or to get some kind of a financial incentive. Look, this is a business and everybody's got a price. The Rockies have a price in prospects to move him. And he's got a price in, you know, money. He just had a kid. So that was part of this. You know, you give a little bit more security to that family by maybe extending him for a year at $10 million. Everybody's got a price. Wouldn't you move from Colorado to New York for $10 million? I would. Just watched the post-game show from last night, and I've cracked the code. i figured it out. Aaron Boone, it's right there in front of us. It's right there in front of us. 52 runners left on base in this first six games. 52. 22 alone in the Mets games. How the hell do you leave 22 runners on base in two games? Right there in front of us. He's talking about the freaking batter in the box, looking at all the traffic we can't get across the plate. That's a truly astonishing statistic. It's amazing how inept this team has been with runners on base for years. And it has to come from the organizational philosophy somehow. Whatever they're teaching is wrong. Starting to get really tired of uh, BJ, I mean, BP, but Mayhew. You know he's going to make contact. And if somebody has first base, it's a guarantee that will play because he's not in the ball anywhere else. But uh, on a positive note, um, I might be what I'm seeing from Wells. Really good at bats. Seems like he's getting on base a lot, a lot of walks. And, uh, Hopefully, Glaber is starting to get it going. Uh, who knows? You hit the nail on the head with DJ LeMahieu. He's still good at making contact, but he's so bad at getting the ball in the air that if there's somebody on base, it's almost always a double play. It's so frustrating. It's so exhausting to watch. And yeah, Glaber Torres has been swinging the bat a little bit better. I still think the Yankees are going to try and move him. I think they're going to take advantage of this little mini hot streak and they're going to move him somewhere. And then I also think that Austin Wells, like you said, been having better at bats. He's really maturing as a hitter. The OPS is over 700 now, and he is on the rise. I think he should get the bulk of the at bats going forward uh, as the Yankees catcher, even when Jose Trevino is set to return. Derek, sports rabbi Josh Hallickman calling from the Holy Land. It's right there in front of us. It's right there in front of us. It's right there in front of Brian Cashman. The man that's got to pay the price has got to be Aaron Boone. There's just no question at this point. Look, you hate to change managers in the middle of the season, but it's not unprecedented that a managerial change has sparked a team to play way better during the middle of the season. I look back at the Marlins in 2003 where they fired their manager, they brought in Jack McKeon, and they won the World Series. Sometimes you just need a different voice in the room. Hey, Derek, it's Nick from Las Vegas. I, I got to tell you, I don't know what's going on here. I feel like I'm living in the twilight zone every year. It's the same thing. Good in April and May, and then June and July, they die. Everybody forgets to hit. Every, every forgets to, uh, They don't know how to hit. Uh, nobody knows how to pitch. And you hear the same commentary from Boone and then Cashman and Hal. You don't even see. I mean, you don't even see them come around. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what the answer is, because right now it looks like you have four good players, maybe, maybe four, and the rest of them need to get traded. So I, I don't know. Let's try and figure out the core of this team, and we'll start at the catching position. I think Wells has established himself as a better offensive player than Jose Trevino. He's heating up. He has better at bats. He's got a swing that's built for Yankee Stadium. I think he's part of the solution. At first base, I've seen some promising signs for Ben Rice. But I've also seen him go four for his last 45 or whatever it is at this point. So he might need some time in AAA to kind of, you know, he only played in AAA for a minute. Uh, he might need some more bats, get used to the these higher end breaking balls that you're seeing uh, from major league caliber pitchers. At second base, I think Labor Torres 
is going to be traded. I think he's going to be on the way out at the trade deadline if anybody's willing to take him on. At shortstop, obviously Volpe has done a nice job defensively. Offensively, he's been a little bit up and down. Had some bad at-bats last night, but got off to a good start uh, in the second half. At third base, I mean, you could go with Oswaldo Cabrera. I'm not super confident that he's going to be anything more than a replacement-level player. I know that's going to tick some people off, but it is what it is. And DJ LeMahieu is finished. He needs to go. He needs to be DFA. Yanks got to eat that money. Around the outfield, you got Verdugo in left. I think that he could be traded. I mean, if you're not going to re-sign him and somebody's willing to give you something for him, he's obviously not hitting. He's a good defensive player. Maybe somebody would give you something for him. Grisham, you could take him or leave him. I don't really need him on this team. He's a good defender, good fourth outfielder, but doesn't hit at all. And I think you could probably get a minor leaguer who could hit a little bit better and not lose much off of the defense out of it, out of that spot. And then, obviously, Judge and Soto, your two best players. You want to keep them around. On the pitching staff, I've heard some rumors that Nestor Cortez could be traded. That would not shock me. Cole has an opt-out. I don't think he's going to use it at this point because of the elbow issue. But if he does, I say you let him walk. And I say you use that money to reinforce the pitching in other ways. Maybe even sign Corbin Burns, who's a little bit younger. You got Carlos Rodon pitched better last time out, but he's totally hit or miss, and that's a baseball pun. But, you know, he's either great or he gives up eight runs in the first inning. There's not much in between with Carlos Rodon. And then you got Stroman, who I think has thrown the ball well. I think he's good for the clubhouse. You got Luis Heal, who has been very impressive and is on the ascent. He could be a ace of the future. And that's pretty much where we stand at this point. There's room for improvement at first base, second base, third base, left field. And obviously you're getting Stanton back at DH, so we're not going to go out and trade for a DH. And then you probably need two or three bullpen pieces. I mean, legitimately, this team needs six guys. Six guys. Good morning, Derek. This is Hugh from Bay Ridge. The only thing I want from Cashman is his resignation. But, of course, that will never happen. Here are the players on the 26th man roster who are not championship material, to say the least. Ferguson, Gomez, and Canely on the mound. Norveus behind the plate. J.D. Davis, Lemayu, Gleyber Torres, Grisham, and Verdugo. You're not going to win a championship with such a lack of talent. I think that Cashman's been in that position too, too long. I think the game has passed him by. I really do. I mean, he's been in that position for more than a quarter century. The game has changed. And sure, experience has some value, but you got to look at things with a fresh set of eyes, too. Hey, hey, uh, frustrated Yankee fan calling all the way from McKinney, Texas. This is JB. And just wanted to say that from the moment that it happened, I knew it was going to go downhill. I'm not saying that I'm any type of prophet, but I just knew when they got rid of Girardi, that year, I said, man, this may be the beginning. Also close, but yet so far. I want to take a minute and talk about the Girardi thing, because I always liked Girardi. I did hear that he lost the clubhouse at the end of his tenure, and obviously he went to Philadelphia, and they didn't win. But, you know, different people are meant for different jobs. I always felt like Girardi was a great fit with the Yankees. You know what I mean? He seems like a Yankee. But, look, people um, people got mad that he didn't challenge that play in the division series against the Indians back in 2017, led to a Lindor Grand Slam. The Yankees won that series. He got the team. He turned them around. They were down 0-2. I can't see Aaron Boone ever motivating this team to come back from a loss like that. When this team collapses under Aaron Boone, they just stay in the grave. All right, guys, I think we had a record number of voicemails last night. I had to sift through a number of uh, trolling Mets fans, but it is what it is. Uh, I've got like about 10 more that I would love to to get into this program, but I've got to get some stuff done today. So I appreciate everybody who called in. No game tonight. I will see you tomorrow. Maybe we can get another voicemail show going if you want to call back in. We've got about you know probably 10 more that I haven't even gotten to yet. So uh, tune in, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time. Ball game over.